You ever have that army sitting in a drawer that you don't think about much? You had an initial explosive relationship, painting, building, gaming, but that excitement that hit hard fades away fast. And so that army goes into the drawer half finished. You still have all the stuff. You still have every intention of working on it, but the mood never seems to strike again. Hi, I'm Jay, and I have a Gene Stealer cult army. Welcome to Eons of Battle. This video is all about how I plan to bring a little love back to an army that has languished in obscurity for me. I am constantly working on my Black Templar, I occasionally paint an orc, but I never ever seem to be in the mood to work on my Gene Stealer cult, the cult of the Four-Armed Emperor. I think I need to work on that. And stay tuned all the way till the end of this video to see a montage of painted minis courtesy of the EOB Complete community. I remember when the Gene Stealers were new and shiny. It all started for me when it started for many Gene Stealer cult players with this box. Death Watch Overkill. Suffer not the alien to live. This was a very exciting time to be in 40k. Two brand new fractions dropping simultaneously in a 50 mini box. And this thing was a steal. I actually got two of these boxes to start my cult off right. Also, please leave a comment if you have ever played the game or have seen someone else play this game. I have a suspicion that no one on this earth has ever played it. We all bought this box strictly for the minis. I had seen glimpses of Gene Stealer cults in the past, from photos of old models like these ancient metal models from back in the Diz A, and from fantastic artwork like this, which made the cult look like an army of gross pigmen. And who could forget the lovable couch potato, the original Gene Stealer patriarch. I have to get me one of these one day. I don't know where my love of the cult went. There is nothing wrong with the cultists. I think a combination of a large amount of small, difficult to paint minis and the rules being terrible in 8th edition led to this army getting shelved. My aberrants were and are one of my favorite models, but I can't say the same about the paint job. It was good when I painted it many, many years ago, but now it's looking a little bit plain. When I was painting my Gene Stealer cult, I was in the final days of learning the Games Workshop painting style, and it's a very good style for getting things done, but I have since grown past it. Nowadays, when I'm painting a mini, instead of the classic base coat wash highlight method, I do a lot more abstract things with light and texture, and I think I can bring a lot of it to my Gene Stealer cult army. I think I can demonstrate this perfectly with my two Patriarch models. Yes, I know, one's a Broodlord. Shush, they're the same thing. This model I painted in 2017, and I think at the time it was probably the best miniature I had ever painted. But I think my priorities were a little mixed up. I tried to paint it exactly like the box art, and I did a pretty good job, but I think that those priorities kind of led me down the wrong rabbit hole. My darks and highlights are pretty close together, and so when you start to look at the model not in perfect lighting and from very, very close up, a lot of the details tend to get lost a little bit, and even from across the table, Instead of looking like perfectly crisp lines, it kind of just looks blue. On this model that I just painted this year, I really pushed the contrast between my lightest lights and my darkest darks, and I really think the model shines for it. Also, since it's natural flesh, I used a lot of modeled colors, and I really tried to be a little bit more random with the patterns and with the highlights, and I think it really does help the overall look a lot. And I really, really pushed the contrast almost to pure white on the hands and the head and I really think that makes them really look vibrant. I think that this style is definitely where I want to take my Gene Stealer cult now. So I have a lot of Gene Stealer cult models, and I think the perfect subject to focus on would be my aberrants. I have the models, and they're not bad, but they could be better. When I look at my Gene Stealer cult army, I want to feel inspired. So what do I do? Do I strip the paint off and try again? No. That would be silly. We don't strip paint that we can fix. Sitting in front of the sink with a bottle of Simple Green and a toothbrush does not sound like my idea of a good time. I want to rekindle my love of this army, and I want to have fun doing it, and I think laying on some more paint on top of the paint that's already there is going to be a lot more fun. There is plenty of good paint here already, I just want to take what I got and make it better. My strategy is going to be... Number one, use the current paint job as my base coat, and brighten everything up with highlights, especially the skin. I want these models to look less like purple hulks and more like alien abominations. Number two, I want to make the weapons stand out. Just plain lead belcher was okay at the time, but I can do much better now. I want to push the highlights even further, and I want to try out some technical paints like texture paste and pigment powders. And number three, I want to fix up the base. The brown sand is fine, but it kind of blends in. I want a base that has some striking color and will complement the model's paint job. It's time to get to work. I'm really 
really excited for this paint job because it's a little bit like getting to eat dessert first. It's just the highlights. The uh, base coating is already done for me. But the first thing I want to do is I want to change up the decorations on these bases. I might put them back on later, but for right now I'm going to take them all off. I don't know if uh, bright blue gems is really the look I want to go for. What else could I use? I put down a drop of Gene Stealer Purple, and then some tan pink, and then some white paint. I mix these colors together to get my highlights. A 50-50 of purple and tan, and then a 50-50 of tan and white. I kept the original colors on my palettes too, just in case I need them for some touch-ups. Now to give these guys a little bit of color to their skin, I'm going to be layering up different shades of tan, and I'm not particularly good at this. Feathering, getting a nice blend in between the colors, but I can fake it with one easy trick, matte medium. You mix in plenty of this and it's going to make your paint a little bit see-through, and that is going to help a lot to fake that blend. Just mix a little bit of this into the paint, and or a little bit of a lot of it into the paint, and it's off to the races. I took my purpley tan mixture and began putting this on top of all of the bulging muscles. Already I can see that this is helping. It looks really, really creepy. These aberrants are basically a human and a gene stealer in the same body. It's basically Cronenberg's The Fly. Because of the matte medium, the paint doesn't cover well, but that's okay. Because you can see so much of the base through, I can just apply it in layers, a little smaller every time, and it'll look like the perfect creamy blend. For the face, I tried a little harder to really bring out his winning smile. A vaguely human face on a gross, puffy body. With just a little bit of pink thrown on there, the model has transformed. I am really, really digging it. It is completely moved away from these older models that are just purple. It really looks like it has a little bit more life to it. It is super, super cool. And that's just the first highlight. This isn't even its final form. I started highlighting with the tan white mixture and making sure to apply this sparingly. I don't want his skin to look too chalky, just on the topmost muscles in his face. This is a really interesting exercise because if I had tried to paint these new today, I probably would have airbrushed on the tan and tried to brush on the purple. But actually, I think the tan looks really good on top of the purple. I think it looks much better. Happy accidents. I was loving my now fleshy aberrants, but I thought they were a little too uniform. So I painted three of them with brown skin. I did the same thing using my matte medium. I mixed up paint and applied it in layers on the muscle. I really liked how this looked and the different skin tones looked really good together. After the brown, I mixed in a little bit of pink tan to bring up the color and I did my highlights. The skin is now done and it's looking pretty good. It really brightened up the miniatures a lot and so now I think my work's cut out for me on uh, fixing up the weapons because before I thought the whole model looked very even but now that bright skin is really helping everything pop out, and so I'm really excited to work on these weapons. Before we finish touching up these aberrants, you know what is always perfect the first time? The Eons of Battle Patreon! If you like our videos, the best way to support us is by becoming a member of our Patreon. Over there you'll gain access to some behind the scenes, voting on what models I paint live here on YouTube, a live hobby hangout every week, and more. With that out of the way, let's fix the minis. On the weapons I did a little trick. I watered down some black paint and applied this to those areas. It won't change the colors, but it will make them 50% darker. It's like looking at the weapons through sunglasses. It'll give a much more grim dark base to work off of, and I don't have to repaint anything. I did the same trick on all the pants and skirts. I don't know why I did a Spider-Man red and blue all those years ago. I probably would do brown today, but with a darkening it should look fine. Look at that ass! Games Workshop always seems to do a good job sculpting the rear, if you know what I mean. With my weapons now dark, a dry brushing of silver should look amazing. If you want your metal to pop, you need some contrast. Bright silver over almost black metal will really show off the metallic paints. For small stuff like this, I actually like dry brushing with longer bristles. I like how it's more random. Some spots are going to get bigger, longer streaks than others. Short bristles give a very uniform coverage. I'm going to put a little bit of rust on the weapons, and I could do this just by dry brushing a little bit of bright orange paint. But I really kind of do like Games Workshop's Rhizo Rust. It's like a halfway, it's a technical paint. It's halfway in between like a dry and a wet paint. But it's nice and bright and it's chunky while still being pretty opaque because you don't want it to overpower. You don't really want orange, you just want that orange tinge to be your rust. And I actually really like this stuff. I just stippled this all over the weapons, being very subtle with it. I don't want to cover up any of the painting I've done. Then it was time for my secret weapon, pigments. I poured some isopropyl alcohol into a cup and scooped some orange pigment powder. I applied this to the areas I wanted rusty, and remember that the alcohol will make the paint soft, so don't get too aggressive with the brushing. Soft strokes. 
This will pool in a very natural way and give the look of old dry rust. Finally, a last dry brushing again with the silver. This shows off the areas of heavy use. The weapons really do look slick, and the trick to interesting weathering is layers. It's a watered down coat of black paint, and then a dry brush of silver, a dry brushing of some orange rust, and then some rust pigments, and then a final dry brushing of silver. When you stack on all of the effects, that's when you really start to get a really interesting looking bit of weathering where all of the different elements are working together to really kind of make it stand out. And now it's onto the base. I always like it when a special effect can do the work for me. And I have not been painting the feet because I want to make them muddy. I took some texture paste and slopped it all over the feet. It's like a reverse pedicure. I put down some brown pigments over the base and this looked great. It really showed off the texture of the sand more than the paint, and I think that's good. The base is just a color so that the eyes are drawn to the paint job. On the feet, I used two brushes, one to wet the feet and legs, and another to put on the pigments. This will stick down to the water. Then I decided I liked the tufts, but they were a bit too big. I cut each one into many smaller tufts with a hobby knife. At this point, the self-sticking glue was worn out, so I used a drop of super glue to attach each one. Now that I cut up the tufts, instead of every other base getting a tuft, every base can now have two or three. Check out these aberrants. I really had a fun time painting them. I know whenever I finish a model, I have a little bit of a glow and that miniature has a tendency to follow me around the house just so that I can look at it a little bit longer. When these guys were just purple sitting in a drawer, they did not spark joy, but now I'm excited to work on this army, which is a good thing because these are the models that really sold me on the Gene Stealer cult. They're different from the Tyranids. Tyranids are scary like the Xenomorph, monstrous and perfect. The aberrants are scary like the thing, or chud, lumpy and deformed, still clearly deadly but with a healthy dose of body horror. I am really excited and that's a good thing, I have 10 more aberrants where they came from. I might have a problem. Looking over the rules for these models, they're very interesting, they might become my anti-vehicle units. My cult does not have much heavy hitting high damage weapons, so these guys cult ambushing or being dumped out of a goliath rock grinder might do the trick nicely. They have two flavors, the pick and the hammer. The hammer is the sure thing, two attacks each with a hammer, at strength 10, AP minus 3, damage 3. But they're worse at swinging, only landing 50% of their punches. Hmm, a little less than half. Probably will get the job done, but it's risky. The power picks on the other hand are a lot more interesting to me. They give up the monstrous strength 10, 4 strength 5, AP minus 2, damage D3. But they hit on 3s. And you get two extra rending punches, which have a chance of going AP minus 4. Now we're talking. 14 hits on 3-ups, and the white dice have a chance to rend on the wound. The picks are probably what I would go with. The extra punches could get them out of trouble if some chap infantry tried to tar pit them. So my mission was to repaint a single unit and see if it could rekindle my love of this army. And did it work? Yes. Yes it did. This was really fun. I want to play with these minis, and I want to lean into the horror elements of the Gene Stealer cult. I want to paint more minis and watch more horror movies. A complete success. That's it for this video. Do you guys ever have it where you fall out of love for a model or army? Let me know in the comments. And do you ever go back to your old minis and just try again? When is a model finished? If ever. These cultists have given me a new standard to bring all of my Gene Stealer cult up to and I'm very excited to see it happen. But now it's time for the real star of the show, this week's EOB Complete Submissions. We put out a challenge to our community to send us before and after photos of their recently finished models to be immortalized in our videos. If you want to join in the fun, you can submit a before and after photo of your painted mini to our Discord server, which you can find in the description below, or you can post it to Instagram with the hashtag EOBcomplete. Without further ado, let's look at and get inspired by what the folks have finished this week. A Tech Priest by Grayscale, a Cad Bane from Legion by Disco, some X-Wing miniatures by Pippo, a Red, White, and Blue Griffin by Opera Ghost 21, Jesse, a Little Goblin by Decimation, a Fetid Bloat Drone by Tweepler, a Phase Spider by Frog, some Saurus Warriors by Joe Dracos, some Hell Blasters by Pyrite, a Nurgle Demon by Dwarven, an Iron Warriors Chaos Space Marine by Hesne, an LAAT Transport Ship from Legion by Wolfpack, some Blade Guard Veterans by Muckle, a Terminator Chaplain by Kozer, a Gaggle of Poxwalkers by David Spitzer, a Custom Base by Orange, a Laserback Tank by Barry, an Aquilon Terminator by Jimmel Kotal, some Grey Knight Terminators by CEO of Eating Sons, an Emperor's Children Space Marine by Aurelia the Ura, a Primaris Aggressor by CDR Keller 21, a Horde's Minion Felgast by Lex Kill Cannon, and a Grey Knight Kill Team by Lord Noir. 
Congratulations to everyone for a job well done. It's no small feat to get paint on a mini and you all should feel really proud. Nothing gets the hobby juices flowing like finishing a project and we all thank you for sharing your work, motivating us and the hobby community to paint our plastic. Thanks for sharing.